Hello, my name's Dr Gill. Uh, I've been asked to do an assessment of your hips today, uh, a specific one to look if we've got any evidence of pain. Before we start, could we please confirm your name and date of birth? Yeah, Megan um, Struthers, 22nd of February, 1998. Super. So in terms of doing this examination, it's going to get you to lie down on the bed and we're going to pick up your leg and we're going to turn it in and outwards, putting some pressure on it. We will be looking for pain when we do that. So with that, it might mean we cause some pain. Are you happy for us to continue with that? Mm -hmm. Super, so if you want to lie on the bed for me. So which leg is the most painful one? Uh, the left one. Super, so we're going to start off with the right side first. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm just going to pick up the leg all the way up to 90 degrees and I'm going to rotate it out and down. Is that causing any pains or problems there? No. Okay, we're going to do the same again on the opposite side. So picking up and turning out. I'm just putting pressure on that knee. Any pain with that one? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to do the same, similar again. We're coming up, we're coming across, and we're turning out. Is that causing any discomfort? No. Okay. And we're going to do the same again on the side. So coming up, coming in, and coming out. Is that causing any discomfort? Yeah. Super. So we have found that pain, so what we'll do is we'll organise for an uh, investigation to go further. Do you have any other questions? No. Super. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name's Dr James Gill and you've joined me for another discussion about clinical skills. Today we're going to be looking into depth about two examinations that we've done the demonstration for, that being the Farber test, flexion, abduction and external rotation, and the Fardier test, flexion, a deduction and internal rotation. As we've seen, these are relatively manual um, examinations um, and the purpose of them is to try and identify pain which will then allow us to hone down on potential diagnoses. So with that, let's go through the demonstration and highlight the points that we're going through and then we'll talk a little bit about the anatomy and what's actually going on with these tests. So when it comes to the Farber and Fardier tests, essentially we're talking about looking at the same region but with slightly different um, forces and thus allowing us to identify slightly different pathologies. As we've seen from just looking at how the hip moves when we're doing the Fardier test, we can see why we might get um, femoral acetabular impingement in one area versus the other with the Farber test. They are very, very similar and I think it's important to highlight that but they are broadly able to differentiate a few different things. So with the Fardier test, where we're talking about the adduction and internal rotation, we're looking at particularly um, femoral acetabular pain associated with the click and pain in the groin. We might be talking about a labral tear at the back of the hip and also problems with um, iliospinous tendonitis, so back pain coming down, radiating into the groin. So with regard to the two tests that we've talked about here, if we do Fardier, so if we do flexion, adduction and internal rotation, so turning it round, you can see how, sure, we've got the bolt here, but it's the bolt that bangs in the way. So if we had arthritis at this area, then we'd be getting pain at that point. Conversely, if we do flexion, abduction, and external rotation, you can see how we're now going to be getting an impingement on the inside of the acetabulum at the base here. By comparison with the far bare, there we're looking a little bit more at connective tissue diseases um, or connective tissue problems, should I say. Again, these are almost screening tools. They're looking to generate pain, and if pain is produced, that's considered a positive test and we need to look elsewhere. So if with our Farber test, we want to be um, thinking about SI pathology at the back, again, maybe lumbar spine things, or potentially a greater trochanter, trochanteric pain uh, syndromes. But ultimately, when it comes to looking at the Farder and Farder tests, it's worthwhile thinking why are we doing it? We're looking to identify pain and then look at the appropriate investigations. So, for example, if a patient came in complaining of pain 
in the right buttock and they, they will often cup their hand and say, I, I get pain here when I'm stepping forward or perhaps flexing the, um, the hip. Then I'm going to think about a labral tear. So I'm going to do my Fardier test. I'll also do the Farber test as well. But if either of these are positive, i.e. generate pain, then I'm going to think about getting that MRI on the patient. If the tests are negative, I'm not going to say no to the MRI, but I may um, direct the patient to get physiotherapy before we move further with regard to investigations. And I think that's very important to highlight the different skill sets that we have in um, you know, the medical community. And just because the doctor has assessed the patient doesn't mean somebody with a different skill set, i.e. the physiotherapist, isn't going to be able to help or potentially uh, improve on the diagnosis that we're working with. I personally think that it is a fabulous skill to be able to diagnose the patient without resulting to uh, the need for a scan. Remembering that our investigations should be there to confirm our diagnosis when needed, not make the diagnosis in the first place. Well, that's been our overview on how to do the Farber and Fardair test. I hope this um, simple video has been useful for yourselves. If you put any questions and comments down below, we'll see if we can uh, answer those and get back to you. Thanks. Cheerio. See you next one.